and welcome to the next video in the DIY garden music room series. In this video I will be tape and jointing the internal walls to get them ready for paint. And when it comes to preparing the walls there are a couple of options. A full plaster or a skim coat or tape and jointing. Now I've gone with the second method tape and jointing for a couple of reasons. Firstly it's cheaper as you need less materials and secondly, for a beginner, it felt like a lot easier method to follow rather than learning how to plaster the walls and achieve the same nice smooth finish that you get from the plasterboard. In the end, once painted, you won't notice a difference between the use of either method. If you go with the tape and joint method, then you would normally use tapered edge plasterboard. These boards are recessed on the edges to allow for room for the plaster joint to be built up and then still remain flush with the face of the plasterboard. The other option is square edge, which is best used when you're skimming the whole walls um, as you're adding a layer of the same thickness across all of the, the wall face. If you use square edge and the tape and joint method, then you're going to have all of these ridges or uneven wall surface where you're applying layers of compound over just the butt joints. So for that reason, tape and jointing works well on walls where you can hang plasterboard vertically and the walls are not higher than 2.4 meters, which is the standard length of plasterboard. But if you've got taller walls or large ceilings, then the full skim option is probably better. The other thing to note is that the tapered edge plasterboard, whilst marginally more expensive, is a little bit more expensive than the square edge, but I guess because of the manufacturing process. So um, just something to bear in mind if you're doing a large room. The method itself is fairly straightforward. It's just a bit time consuming. I started by using a large scraper to apply a layer of plaster or filler in the tapered joints. The second step is to then add the strip of jointing tape down the middle. The third step is to then go over this tape with more filler and get the area flush with the front of the plasterboard. You then let this dry. Finally, you go over the whole area again with another thin layer of filler extending out a few inches either side. This then blends the field layer with the plasterboard. Now to do this, you use a tool called a tapering knife. Now it's not really a knife, it's more like a large scraper or a trowel um, with a straight edge on a handle. Um, typically the 12 inches or 14 inches wide and that's how you can get a nice wide smooth finish that by the eye you can't see that there was ever a join or you know, any kind of raised area there at all. You can also get tools to do the internal and external corners um, but as I've got quite a small room and I'm not really planning on doing much of this again in the future um, I decided not to spend the money on getting the extra tools um, you can do it you know, as I've done it just takes a little bit more effort um, to use a, a trowel to get a nice straight edge Bubbles can occur through a variety of reasons, normally not having enough plaster or having it too wet or too dry, 
or even having damaged plaster ball behind it. The best thing to do to address this is once dry, use a Stanley knife to cut out the bubble. You need to cut it back as much as you can until you get to solid material, so no flapping tape, no you know, loose bits of plaster board, etc. And then apply filler into the gap and build it up gradually until you get it flush again with the main surface. And as you can see here, um, I've cut out this bubble and filled it and it, there is absolutely no sign there was any, any bubble there to start with. Few options here. For this type of job the best option is to go for the paper tape which is supposedly less likely to crack over time. It also has a crease down the middle which makes it easy to fold the tape in half um, for the internal corners. For the external corners, i.e. around the window, I also use a paper tape but it's different tape. Um, this stuff has a thin strip of metal along the inside and this provides strength to the external corners which are exposed. Uh, all of the links to the tools and materials I've used are in the description. So we're almost at the end now, um, what I will say is that uh, I did this in the winter of uh, 2020, so it's been about 8 months now since I completed the plastering and the decorating, and I can say that there's been no cracks or, you know, or, or any problems at all with the finish, so overall I'm very happy with the approach that I've taken and it's, it's come out looking really good. Um, so here's the completed room with the interior door liner also in place. Um, the next step is going to be to sand everything down to make sure it's nice and smooth and then we can finally move on to painting and decorating. So thanks very much for watching, thank you for liking and subscribing, um, I hope you're enjoying the series and I look forward to speaking to you in the next one.